What's up everyone, it's Kyle here and today's C programming tutorial is all about structs. In last week's tutorial we talked about variables. In this week's tutorial we're going to take what we learned last week a few steps further and learn about what are called structs. Now struct, or the extended form as structure, are a way of storing multiple variables symbolically under one name. So it allows you to compartmentalize a whole bunch of pieces of information a little bit more cleanly and conveniently. Instead of having one variable for every single quantity that you want to store, you'll have a struct that will represent a whole category of variables, and then each of those individual variables will be called a member within that struct. So it's a way of keeping your program a little bit cleaner, a little bit neater, more compact and easier to navigate. And today's tutorial, of course, continues on the theme of memory allocation that we started in last week's tutorial. So without further ado, let's start learning about structs. Let's take a look at how we go about creating a struct in C. First, I'm going to brainstorm for you an example in which we would use a struct because I think it's easier to understand them in context. So let's say we have a robot that has two drive motors. There's a motor on the left and a motor on the right. And for each of these drive motors, we want to monitor two different qualities, right? We want to monitor the motor's speed and the motor's power. So really, what we would end up using if we had individual variables is we would have four variables. However, that's kind of cumbersome. And if you were using a more complex system, you would need to use a lot more than four variables. So I'm going to show you how to set up a struct that uh, houses all of the information for both the motor power and the rotation of both drive motors simultaneously. What you're first going to do is you're going to start out by uh, typing type def, type def struct, which initializes the struct, and then use some curly cube brackets to outline the body. Then what you're going to do is you're going to define variables for each of the end qualities that you want to monitor. So in our example, we're looking at the rotation speed and the position, the angle of each motor. So we're going to make a variable, we'll call it uh, type long, and we're going to call this speed, which is motor speed, and just punctuate that with a semicolon. And then we're going to do another one for position and then again punctuate that with a semicolon and then once you've defined all of the variables that you're going to monitor then you can close that with another curly cube bracket it's important that you don't define any values within the struct here because that will cause an error you can only define uh, a value for the variable afterwards after the struct has been initialized and then so to finish up the struct we need to give it some kind of name so I'm going to call it drive wheel because that's what we're going to be monitoring and now we need to initialize the two other parts of the struct. So we have a left wheel and we have a right wheel. So I'm going to write drive wheel, then space left, then drive wheel, space right. And now if we compile, we have our struct correctly initialized. There are no errors. It just is warning me that my variables aren't used yet. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and we can assign values to the, the position and speed uh, variables that we have assigned. So the way you would go about doing this now, since we have the struct, we have the left object and we have the right object. And the left contains both a speed and a position, and so does the right. So to define a speed for the left wheel, you go left.speed and then set it equal to something. So let's say equal to 35. And then we can compile that, and we see it compiled correctly. We can also assign a write speed, so you do write.speed equals some other number, let's say 45, also compiles correctly. You can even define a position, so if we say left.position equals uh, some number, let's say 67 for example, and that all compiles all well. And you can keep going like that and you can define. And then if you want to read the value that's being stored in these variables, again, later in the program, I'll show you how to do that. I'll set up an example. So if we want the robot to do something, when the left motor's position is greater than 67, for example, I'll write if, and then in the argument, you can put left.position, which is symbolic for the variable, the value that's stored in the variable that represents the left wheel's position. So if that is greater than 67, um, do something 
right? And that's how you set up reading a value from a struct and then programming the robot to do something with it. This is something that you haven't seen yet in my series. This is a control structure, and I'll be covering them shortly in the coming weeks. But this right here is the, the topic of the lesson, and that's how you define a struct. Now I want to show you an example of how I've used a struct in my own programming. I'm going to navigate over to this piece of code, which is a simple GPS navigation program that I made for one of my EV3 robots. And it uses a Dexter Industries GPS receiver and a high technic compass sensor. What I use the struct for is to hold the compass sensor data because the sensor gives you a few different pieces of information, among them an absolute heading and a relative heading. And I thought it would just be annoying and cumbersome to have to use individual variables for each of those pieces of information. So instead, what I do is I create a struct to hold the compass sensor data so all of the pieces of information that the compass sensor returns so that's relative heading and absolute heading and they're all contained within the object of the compass so then later on if I want to reference the compass sensor and read some of its data I can just say compass which is the name of the struct or the object compass dot relative heading is greater than five so if it's greater that, than that value then it can do something um, and then see I'm reading it again it's compass dot relative heading and that's the data that I want to read there so that's an example of how I used a struct in the context of my own programming projects thank you for watching my tutorial this week if you haven't already click here to check out my new book it's called building smart lego mindstorm ev3 robots and it's now available on amazon if you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this every Thursday. And if you have an idea for a tutorial, drop your suggestion in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.